it is a dangerous moment in history to not know who we are and the stability we cannot find in the world we so desperately need to discover in ourselves. The horror of world events, the attitudes of our political figures, the absence of role models, and a media that celebrates cruelty and mindless violence makes honoring the self not only a profound human need, but a cultural need. How we feel about ourselves at the deepest level affects every part of our existence and has tremendous consequences. How we function in the world, in our society, in our relationships, and with our children. I'm Audrey Hope, and today on Real Women, I welcome special guest Nathaniel Brandon for the heroic path to self-esteem. Today, Nathaniel Brandon will lead us on a journey to our greatness and will show us how we can embrace this intense time period to, to become incredibly empowered human beings. Dr. Brown, let's recap the behavior that is needed for self-esteem. Right. We talk about self-esteem as confidence in our mind and confidence in our right to be happy. And I make the point that there are six practices which I have become convinced from working in this area for now four decades are the most important for growing healthy self-esteem. One, the practice of living consciously, bringing a high level of awareness to whatever it is you're doing versus moving through life half asleep and then wondering why your life does not work very well. Good Two, <laughs> the practice of self-acceptance, by which I mean the willingness to own and experience whatever your thoughts or your feelings or your actions are without self-castigation and without denial or self-disowning. Three is the practice of self-responsibility, by which I mean taking responsibility for my life and well-being, accepting that I'm the author of my choices and actions, realizing that I'm responsible for the level of consciousness I bring to my work or my relationships, realizing that I'm responsible for the quality of my communications, realizing that I'm responsible for the words coming out of my mouth. I'll tell you a, ver a very fast story that illustrates this. I was giving a talk on this subject in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago. And a few of the people there, men that I knew, took me out for coffee afterwards. And one man told me the following story. He said, I was terribly impressed by what you had to say about living consciously because one miserably hot Saturday afternoon, I was working on my car and trying to solve a problem which I was not able to solve when my five-year-old son came over. And in my exasperation, without thinking whether it was realistic or not, I asked him to do something to help me, which was quite outside his powers. So, of course, he fumbled it badly, and I lost my temper, and I hollered at him, You can't do anything right. Mm -hmm. Then I was horrified, he went on to say, to see my little boy walking away, muttering to himself under his breath, You can't do anything right. You can't do anything mm -hmm. right. So I dropped my tools, he said, and I ran over, and I picked up my son, and I apologized. In that case, I caught it, Nathaniel, he said to me. But the thing that horrified me is that how many times might I not have caught it in life? Right. So what I got out of your talk was the important yes. living consciously means being conscious yes. of the words coming out of my mouth. Yes. I'm glad you told that so story. So that's Dr. one story. Brandon. Okay, so we have the practice of living consciously, we have the practice of self acceptance, we have the practice of self responsibility. Then we have four, the practice of self assertiveness, which has to do not with pushing to the front of the line or galloping over widows and orphans. But it has to do with treating yourself with decent respect in encounters with other human beings. It means treating your thoughts and feelings as important. It means not um, hiding who you are, what you think, or what you feel mm -hmm. uh, for fear, God forbid, somebody might look at things differently. Right. In other words, some people really do terrible violence to themselves. They're so afraid of anybody's disapproval that they bury who they are. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is dreadful for self-esteem. Yes. So self-assertiveness is the fourth pillar of self-esteem. And the fifth is the practice of living purposefully. By which I mean what? What does it mean to live purposefully? It means in any area, whether short-term goals or long-term goals, to articulate and to know what are my goals, what are my purposes in life, in taking on this job, in electing to bring a child into the world, in giving this speech, in going to this dinner. Mm -hmm. What actions do I need to take to accomplish my purposes? Mm -hmm monitoring my behavior to see, because I may have very nicely articulated goals and a very good action plan, <laughs> trouble is, it's not what I do. Exactly. So I can inadvertently, in effect, be led down another road and don't realize that I'm not acting in accordance with what mm -hmm. I had decided. And finally, 
the fourth aspect of living purposefully, very important, paying attention to outcome. Because I may be totally great on points one, two, and three. Trouble is, I miscalculated somewhere, so my actions are not producing mm -hmm. the results I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. So I've got to stay very conscious. Am I getting the results which I thought I would get by taking these actions? Okay. Einstein said something very interesting. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. <laughs> right. Okay? <laughs> So that's the <laughs> fifth pillar of self-esteem is living purposefully. And the mm -hmm. sixth is the practice of personal integrity, which means what? Congruence between what I know, what I profess, and what I do. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Congruence between what I know, what I profess, and what I do. And in simpler language still, it means telling the truth. It means honoring my commitments. It means keeping my promises. Uh, it means walking my talk. And mm -hmm. when we do that, we are proud of our actions and we are proud of the person we make ourselves into. But if we don't do it too often, we produce a very contaminated sense of self. We produce a sense contaminated of... Contaminated spirit. Yes, a contaminated spirit. See, the real interesting question is here on this subject, am I proud of my choices and actions? Now, if they're a source of shame or embarrassment to me, obviously that's got self-esteem implications. So integrity is very, very important for psychological well-being in general and for self-esteem in particular. Right, because it's not, it doesn't matter what the world thinks, it's what you really think. Because we could really be happy and have everyone love us, I mean, and then really suffer inside. That's right. A so and then you say also sort of be a time bomb. Well, you have this great life, you have all this money, you have all this success. And then something happens, and then all of a sudden you find you're 50, and you just, it well, all explodes. Well, that's because you have the externals, but you don't have the internal. Right. You're not really a person that you're able to like. So in the absence of that, it's you know, it's great to have money, it's great to have friends, nice to have all the other stuff. But if you don't like yourself, it's a very sour, unhappy existence. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take an awful lot to knock you over. See, in every life there are storms, there are setbacks. If I've got a fairly good self-esteem, uh, I have resilience. I'm able to handle that and get back and pick myself up. But if I have a low or a shaky self-esteem, it's much easier to knock me over mm -hmm. and keep me down. Mm -hmm. uh, applying this to business, you know, I'm very intrigued by the fact that a great many of our most successful entrepreneurs have one or more bankruptcies in their past. The point is, failure didn't stop them. <laughs> they picked themselves up and they began again. They persevered. One of my messages to the world is, the world belongs to those who persevere. Right. I think perseverance is an extraordinarily important virtue. Right. And that's the hero's journey, too. And that, which is like right back to the start. Standing up for what you believe and accepting aloneness. You talk about that a lot. Can you explain yeah, that? Yeah, because sometimes if you really are going to allow yourself to see what you see and know what you know, at times it will have you looking at life very different from other people. And you may feel alienated from them sometimes. And the question then is, can you handle that? Can you tolerate that? Or does it upset you so much that you give up your own mind just to feel you belong somewhere? Right. So, Or following the tribe, let's or, say. Yes. Or following the family. One, or following yes. what, you, what people expect of you. Exactly. One of the things that's very heartening as an author to receive is letters which contain the sentence, your book gave me the courage to do such and such. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I feel that way, Dr. Maybe Brandon. I'm sorry? Pers I feel personally affected by Thank having you. spent time in reading the six pillars of self-esteem, especially, because I think it's a culmination of almost all of your work, and it really, um, really profoundly affected me. I mean, I don't think I'll ever be the same, seriously. Well, I, I thank you. <laughs> it's true. That's an author's dream. That's just the response that one hopes for. I mean, I know I have to take actions to get what I want in my life, and I can't just sit around and wait. And um, that's a very important point. Well, thank you for saying so. It's, it's uh, true. Authors, you know, it's a kind of a life. I sit alone in my room and I sit at the computer. So when I get a chance to meet people and talk to people who read me and the, where the books made a difference, that's mm -hmm. very gratifying mm -hmm. for me to hear. I mean, some people would think that, oh, to talk about selfishness, that's very selfish. But it, but it isn't the art of self. Well, it's, it's, it's selfish in the same sense of breathing is selfish. Right. Self-interest, like you say in the book. It is my self-interest yeah, to be yeah. with people I respect. It's my self-interest exactly. that the world functions better. That's right. And that's a very big distinction. A very big distinction. What, 
What does one need to, to be in a healthy relationship? What does one need to be in a healthy relationship? Well, first of all, you need it. You need to, to love yourself. You need to have reasonably decent confidence in yourself and belief in yourself. So you're not endlessly driving your partner crazy with d demands for reassurance, okay? Or escalating little <laughs> frictions into major catastrophes. Secondly, you need to be fortunate enough to find somebody who is, uh, shares with you your sense of life, your most important values, so that you have a basis for creating a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, you need um, the six pillars. You need to bring a lot of consciousness to the relationship. And you need to take a lot of responsibility. Let me give you an example of what I mean by the last. Uh, anybody can, quote, fall in love you know, or decide they're in love or have some emotion mm -hmm. they call love. But say, okay, now, if I'm going to have a relationship with this person, what is going to require, be required of me in order for this relationship to be enjoyable for both of us and to have a long life? Uh, I got to take some reasonable level of responsibility. Uh -huh. I don't mean that I'm omnipotent. My partner also has a role to play, obviously. But the question is, mm -hmm. what I got to be concerned with is, what is my role? What is my responsibility? Now, people don't, as a rule, <laughs> think that way no, about relationships. They don't think, what am I committing myself to if I say I love you and I want to build a life with you? Uh, what am I signing on for? What am I promising implicitly? So that leads to another book of mine called Taking Responsibility, in which I answer those <laughs> questions.